Now, I don't know when exactly I'll get this video posted. I'll probably just keep this one as kind of a fill-in video for when I just need one to throw up at some point. When I'm, you know, in the middle of a big project, it's going to be a while till I'll post one. But this is a question I do get occasionally from people. They'll email me, and i got to type out a response, and what and how to make them. And what I'm talking about is test leads. Um, occasionally you need a special test lead. Now, I've got, got probably hundreds of... <laughs> Of different test leads. Um, now, a lot of them, they're factory made. Of course, you've got, you know, like oscilloscope probes and stuff like that. You're not going to go making those. But, you know, you have your standard leads like you use on a multimeter. Now, I like the fluke meter leads. I've always just, I like them really good quality wires, really good selection of ends. But here's the big thing about, unlike a lot of test leads, where they screw on or you're limited with the ends you can get with the, the Fluke and the Agilent as well. I actually did a review on a set of Agilent leads, and I like those. But you can get lots of different ends, and they have the double-insulated uh, banana jacks on the end. But it just makes changing out the ends very easy. Um, now, the limiting factor a lot of times with this kind of stuff is, because you can use these with anything, but this end is double-insulated. So, like, this is a good example of this will not work in, let's say, this HP meter. You see, it won't plug in, because this does not use double insulated. This is designed for a standard, just a regular BNC to plug into it. So, you know, they make adapters for these that go from this down to the non-insulated, but you know, a lot of times it's just easier just make your own leads. You know, another thing is the length. It may not be long enough, or maybe you need to hook this lead up to two different things. You, you want to test with two different pieces of test equipment, um, you know, you might want to have one hooked up as an ACE. You know, if the meter doesn't have a dual, dual reading display, like in the case here with these two meters, I want this one to read DC voltage and this one to read AC voltage, because you can have AC and DC on the same line. Well, you can make your own test leads, and that's where a lot of times it comes in handy. Um, or they're not long enough. You know, your leads are... You, you want leads that are longer. So, I make my own leads, if I can get these hanging back up here... I make my own leads all the time. Now, like I say, I've got hundreds of leads, you know, alligator clip leads, just all kinds of stuff. A lot of times you buy your own, but I prefer to make my own. Uh, it really lets me select exactly what I want and to build it exactly how I want. And one of the biggest things for me is, is the quality of the wire. That's one thing I don't like with the majority of test leads. Now, like I say, the Fluke and the Agilence have very nice test lead wire. Uh, it's very flexible and lasts a really long time. Um, a lot of the cheaper test leads you get, they're either stiff, they, you know, they don't, they're, they don't last a long time. You know, I get a set of test leads. I expect them, if I take care of them properly, to last me my lifetime. You know, I don't want something that if I accidentally touch it with a soldering iron, I'm going to melt a hole right through it. So, the first thing is good test lead wire. Now, I use strictly, nothing else, Belden test lead wire. Um, you want the part number, there's the actual sticker on it. Okay, I buy this by the 100 foot spool, and it looks like it's about time for me to probably buy another spool, but I get the, the black and the red. Um, now, I usually go through, I don't want to say twice as much black as I do red, but I do go through more of the black because I end up making a lot of ground wires for stuff a lot of times. I don't need a matched set of, you know, a positive and a negative. A lot of times I just need a, a special black lead for something. And like I say, usually that's going to be a ground, so I tend to go through more black wire. But, like I say, you're making your own, you might as well make the bet. Now, you don't have to buy a whole spool. You can go on place on websites and buy you know, buy the foot, or you can even go on eBay and buy buy the test lead wire. But like I say, get a good quality wire, good rubberized coating on it. I mean, this stuff just lasts forever and ever and ever. It just never, ever seems to wear out. You can touch it with your solder. Now, I'm not going to recommend you go laying a hot soldering iron on there all day. But if I touch this with a soldering iron, it looks just like this. It doesn't do anything to it because it's a good, high-quality uh, sheath on this. Um, but now you just have wire. What are you going to put on for ends? Well, you can get universal ends you can put on yourself. So here are here's a set that I made up. Okay. And I have a non-insulated banana plug on the end. But like I was saying, sometimes I might want to hook up 
to a piece of equipment and measure two things at the same time. Like I say, AC and DC voltage. So these are stackable. So you can see, once you install the wire, you can all, it also has another hole, so you can take another BNC plug and plug it right into the back of it and stack. So that allows me to plug in basically another wire over to another meter. Um, now, these solder in, they go in from the back side. Yeah, this is snapped in there to get it popped apart. But you just stick your test lead wire down, comes down in the side. There's a little hole right there. So I just, I usually add a little bit of extra flux. You know, heat that up and solder your wire in. And then when you put this in into here, you'll have that slot like that with the wire hanging out of it. And then this is the where the wire will come up out of. The wire does not go in the big hole. <laughs> that's your that's your stacking hole for adding another banana plug on top of it. But then and just the cover cover snaps right back over it. Um, now, on the other end, I like to have the double insulated because this end is usually going to be going into a meter or into a power supply or a piece of test equipment or something. But this is the end I'm going to be handling. So I usually like to have the double insulated now, you can get different types of these. This is the full-time insulated. There's no way to touch. So if I had 1,000 volts on this thing right now, I can't get electrocuted. I can touch it. The tip's protected with a piece of insulating plastic, and it has this shield that does not move. It's a solid piece of plastic. Um, the downfall of these is you can only use these with stuff that has double-insulated jacks that are designed for this type of plug. Like I say, it will not plug into this meter down here that needs only a banana plug. So that's where you can get this kind. Okay, basically the same thing. Now this one you don't actually need to solder a wire into it. You just stick your test lead wire in the end and it actually has a set screw. Personally, I don't like that because there's a mechanical fastening there. I like to solder my wires in so I know there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I've got a good connection. But this one has a retractable sh sleeve. Okay, so it will work in this top one, and it will also work in this one, so I can plug it into either meter. Um, like I personally just like this style. Um, I never have to worry about if there's voltage on this getting electrocuted. Um, now one of the advantages of uh, stuff like this is, you're, you're probably looking at this going, well yeah, now I've got uh, pieces of wire with a banana plug on each end, but how in the hell do I attach it to everything, or to anything? Well that's where you can buy the test lead ends. So, like when you buy a set of the fluke meter leads, they come with an assortment of leads like this, and they have the double insulated as well. So these just plug right on, okay? But you see that's double insulated, so it's you know, plastic sleeve there, plastic sleeve here, and then plastic sleeve on the outside. So actually, once you plug this in, you've got three layers of plastic insulating you, so it's very safe, even if it's pulled out a little bit, it's still plastic in there. You can't get electrocuted. You know, I work with tube type equipment and high voltage, especially when I'm working on amplifiers. I can get well up over a thousand volts. So safety is key for me. But uh, like I say, so you have your banana plug on this end, but then you can use whatever test lead you want. So, you know, here's a mini hook. You can get these that have the little grabby fingers. Um, you can get all kinds of alligator clips. There's big clips, and they don't have to be fluke. I think this is, an, um, okay, this one's Mueller, okay? So Mueller makes them. This accepts the double insulated. You can get the kind. This one's actually, I think, an Agilent. It doesn't actually say on it, but I'm pretty sure that's the one that came with the Agilent test leads. Um, but these are good. These are rated for, what are these? Cat 4, 600 volts. Cat 3, 1,000 volts. So, but they plug right on. Uh, there's this kind. This is the these, this is what comes with the fluke meter leads again. So you know, and if you need to, you know, like I was saying about this won't fit in that one meter. Well, that's what these adapters are for. So you can plug this in, and now it has the non-insulated end. Uh, there's just all kinds of you know widgets, and then if you need to even longer test leads, you can get the double female banana plug here. So you can join banana plugs together in series, your test leads in, in series to make up really, really long leads. Occasionally I need to do that if I'm working on like an old antique floor model television or something where you know, the meter's over here on the bench and 
what I'm working on is way back here sitting out on the floor or something. This allows me to make, you know, I've got several sets of these. Hell, I can make test leads 20 feet long if I need to. <laughs> but, uh, like I say, there's how I have a lot of the specialty uh, test leads that I have. Um, I didn't buy them that way. I made them. And then I just use pre-made ends. Like I say, you don't have to get this style. You can get the, the kind like right there. But uh, it just makes life so much easier. Um, and I know the quality of what I have when I'm done. Because I, I, I bought all of the components to make this. Now, like I say, Bell Van Wire, you can look up the part number. You can get this from pretty much any of the man, you know, big suppliers. DigiKey, Mauser, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, the uh, ends, you can, if you still have a Radio Shack around, uh, I think they actually, that might be where some of these came from. I get them from DigiKey and other places too, but uh, if you still have a Radio Shack, I know a lot of those went out of business, but they carry these ends um, that look exactly like this, the same exact ones. I actually, I think, probably got the first ones at Radio Shack, liked them, and then found a cheaper source to buy them in bulk. But, uh, like I say, it's not like they're hard to find. Just do a little bit of searching. Avoid the cheap Chinese ones. I will tell you that. These are good. They're plastic, but I don't, and I don't want to say it's flexible because it's not. But unlike a lot of the really cheap plastic that's brittle, these are not brittle. Nor are these. It's, you can see this is flexible, this end. It's not the kind of stuff where you accidentally drop something on it, the end's going to shatter. So you want, you want a good plastic. And ideally, you want to see a cat rating on there. How many volts it's rated for. I don't know if that will show up in the camera. But you'll see like this one's rated, what, 1,000 volts, CAT3, and 1,500 volts at CAT, uh, was that CAT2? Yeah, so 1,000 volts CAT Category 3 and 1,500 volts CAT2. But, uh, you know, there's how I come up with test leads. Now, like I say, it's the sky's the limit. If you, come, if you do it with banana plugs on each end, you're not limited. You've made universals. Because now you can also put an alligator clip on each end. So, you know, you can turn this into just a jumper wire. It doesn't necessarily have to be an actual test lead that goes to a piece of test equipment. You can make these into jumper wires. Like I say, you can turn them into anything, or you want a big alligator clip on one end, and, you know, so keep the colors the same here. You know, you want a big alligator clip on one end, but you want a little grabby finger, you know, the little grabby fingers on the other end. So I could stick that on the other end of the test lead. So now I could go down to, let's say, a IC clamp onto the leg of a you know a little uh, inline a dual inline package IC leg and then clip this on to another part of the circuit or something or if you know, want to go to a power supply like I say that's why I leave this one as the uninsulated because this one's always going to be something I'm not handling directly so I don't really need this double you know the extra insulation that's you gain gain with this style plug this is a lot more universal which is fine at the test equipment end because this is going to get plugged in first and then I'm going to be handling this end. I don't hook up to a circuit and then hook it into the meter. I always hook up to the meter first, and then... So this is the only end I'm going to be handling when it's hot. When I'm handling this end, it's not going to be attached on the other end. But uh, there you go. There's just a, a quick video on how to come up with custom test leads of, you know, any length you want. Uh, now, you, can, of course, can put alligator clips on them. You don't have to do the double banana like I do. Like I said, I like making cords like this because it actually will reduce how many test lead wires you need. You can make up yourself two or three sets like this of, you know, the black and the red and have a set you use with a meter, another set you can use with, you know, alligator clips on either end or, you know, whatever. You can mix and match. That's the nice thing about doing it like this. Or you can make up permanently test leads. But like I say, use by good wire get good alligator clips that are meant to be attached to the wire, not the plug-in kind like this. But, you know, the normal solder-on style, again, buy good ones. Get something like a Mueller. Don't buy those cheap Chinese ones that you get. You know, you can buy a pack of, what, 10 or 20 of those little uh, jumper test lead wires with the alligator clips on either end. And I swear the third or fourth time I squeeze those things, the jaws are no longer lined up. I mean, they just, they're a pain in the butt. You know, you get... Good test leads like these. Now, granted, these are really heavy, but, you know, these are Mueller's. They're Mueller clamps, Mueller boots. These things, 30, 40 years from now, I'll still be using, as long as I'm still alive, I'll still be using these because they just last forever. The boots last forever, really high quality. 
the clamps, the jaw alignment is always perfect on Mueller's. Now, they're not cheap, but you get what you pay for. If you want to buy cheesy, cheap test leads that you're going to have to replace every week or month or so, or you make up a good set of test leads that could very well last you your entire life. So, uh, there's a trick to making your own your own custom test leads and coming up with all kinds of different ends and assortments. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a test lead. You make them doing the double banana, you know, or a banana on each end. You can come up with, uh, uh, you know, jumper wires, all kinds of systems. Um, and speaking of double banana, a lot of test equipment, especially like power supplies, so like over here, the power supply, a lot of stuff that leads spacing is standardized. Now, all of the power cords that I use here on the bench, I have double banana plugs on them, like these, okay? So you can get these. You could, you know, you could make up a set of, just say, jumper wires. Actually, I have a short set. Where the hell are they hanging? They're right here. I use this one quite a bit. Actually, for that little power supply over there, they don't need to be long. But I made these up. Good high-quality wire, good quality clips. But I just have the double banana on there. And then I don't have to be messing around with two different plugs. I can just plug this in. And on this style of double banana plugs, there's always going to be a little tab that sticks out on one side. You can see that. It actually says GND on there. At least I think that's what this one says. Yeah, GND. And this is the ground side. So, this, so a blind person can use these. I never even look at them anymore. I just know when I grab it, I can feel there's a bump right there. That's always going to be the side that goes to the negative or the black. So, like I say, you can stick those on a set, and that's that's what these are for. These these pretty much are dedicated to one thing and one thing only, and that's hooking this end up to the power supply, and then this to a circuit or a radio. You know, I need to supply a, a voltage into the AGC circuit. Um, you know, if I'm diagnosing something like that, I can just use this set of, set of wires right here. But... Uh, Here's just some tips on making your own custom test leads and the, the type of products to use. Like I said, it all comes down to quality. One of the main reasons of doing this is buying quality products, quality wire, quality test clips and clamps, and quality ends to make up your wires. And you'll never regret it because you'll use them for decades to come.